Hi, and welcome to Framework 7. Okay, in this framework, um, I'm going to be talking about the trial balance. Now, in the last two, um, the one before uh, number four and number six, number four was about journals and, you know, making journal entries. And number six was about the ledger accounts, how we post the journal entries into the ledger accounts. Um, once we have that information in the ledger accounts, you now we can, you know, figure out what the balance in the ledger accounts are. But um, in order to be able to get all that information all at one time and at a glance, we create a trial balance. Uh, but before we go to the trial balance, let me um, uh, let me uh, have you take a look again at our chart of accounts. Now, if you remember from the very first one. Um, I had said that when you think about the books of accounting, think about it at like an, uh, an American history textbook. And in the beginning of the textbook, you have a table of contents. And I had also said that the chart of accounts is nothing more than the table of contents for the books of accounting. Um, what you're looking at here is, is you're able to see, uh, you know, the account numbers, all right, and the title. These are the entire listing of our general ledger accounts. So. You know, from the last video, we would have a separate page, a separate uh, account for each and every one of these. All right. So, you know, there's about 30 of them here. So you would have, you know, 30 or more pages of general ledger accounts and each one would be listed singularly. Right. But notice that you don't see the balance. Right. That's because this is nothing more than a table of contents. Now, once you have uh, information in your ledger accounts, you can create balances in those accounts. And when you create balances in those accounts, then we can, uh, let me get back. Oh boy, what did I do? Control Z, okay, oh, there we go. Um, we can then create our trial balance. And if you notice that the, the trial balance is, you know, I mean, from the account title and the title is the same as the chart of accounts, but all we've done is we've added our debits and our credit columns so that we can write in whatever that particular balance is, right? Um, now, from one of the other videos, I had said that the trial balance, you know, is named depending upon where we're at in the, you know, whenever you're using it, we're at in the process. You can have an unadjusted trial balance, which is created after you've posted all of your journal entries to your ledger accounts. You can have an adjusted trial balance, which is a trial balance you make after you make your adjusting entries. And you can have a post-closing trial balance, which is created um, after you've made your closing entries. And it was in either, I think it was two or three, I had somewhat walked through a little bit more of that process as to what you do at the end of the accounting period. And you would create those three different trial balances. Um, the trial balances are all created as of a specific date. Okay. Um, the reason why it's as of is as of a specific date right here is because you're looking to, um, you're looking to, uh, know what the balances are on that specific date. Okay. Um, it's so, I mean, do they have to be done at the end of the accounting period? No. I mean, if you wanted to know what the balances in the accounts were on November 12th, well, then you would write a, you create a trial balance as of November 12th, right? So it's the balance in those accounts as of that specific date. The other thing about the trial balance is notice that our debits still equal our credits, okay? When I add up all of my debits down here, right, my debits equal when I what my credits are when I add them all up. And what happens to a lot of people when they uh, make a mistake, you know, they, they enter in their uh, journal entries, they make their journal entries, and they think their debits equal their credits. And since all we're doing is just rearranging the information, when we post to the ledger accounts, theoretically our debits still should equal our credits. Um, they do the math to get the balance in the accounts, and when you have the balances, all you're doing is just transferring that information over here onto the trial balance so that you can look at it all in one place. But when they do the math here um, in the debit column and the credit column, an awful lot of times the, these don't match. 
and that violates the most basic fundamental of, of accounting. Your debits have to equal your credits. And then they, well, I know that they have to equal, so let me go back, and I can't seem to find the answer. I can't seem to find where my mistake is, okay? Um, I'm hitting you right between the eyes right now with it. You have to have your debits equal your credits. If your debits don't equal your credits, that means there's cooking of the books going on, all right? The, the system, the method of double entry bookkeeping, you know, uh, allows you to present all of the information so that you can't cook your books. You know, if something, if something is going wrong in the company, it shows up and you're able to, to find it and track it. If your debits don't equal your credits, then you can hand, you know, you can hide, you know, the misappropriation of funds or whatever have you, right? So it's just totally unacceptable to have debits not equaling credits and you have to do the work and only you can do the work because it's your books, not my books, not any other instructor's books, not your friend's books. They're your books. You're the one that has to be able to find that mistake um, so that you can bring your debits and credits back into line. And um, in one of the other frameworks, I am going to discuss a procedure I like to use in order to be able to uh, find that mistake, you know, when it happens to me. So um, basically, that's it for the, the trial balance. But uh, let me just go here and kind of just recap real quick here um, what we got going on here. All right, so a transaction occurs and we have, uh, we make a journal entry and we have a debit, all right, and we have a credit, all right. So our debits have to equal our credits. We put that in our journal. Okay. Then we have um, our ledger accounts. Okay. Now we have to post those uh, entries, our journal entries, into our ledger account. So, you know, I'm going to post, um, you know, whatever that debit is on the debit side for that particular account. And I'm going to post the credit on the credit side for that particular account, right? Now, once I've posted all of my journal entries, I'll have balances in these accounts. Okay. You do the math to get the balances. And notice that I'm looking at one entry here, and it's intuitively you can say, okay, I understand my debits equal my credits, right? Because I only have one entry for this here debit, right? And I put it over here in this general ledger account. I have this one entry for this credit, and I put it in this general ledger account. And when I go to create my trial balance, right? Remember, a trial balance is nothing more than a listing of all of these accounts and the balances in the accounts. When I put the debit on my trial balance, it's over here. And I put the credit in my trial balance, it's over here. And when I do the math, the debits will equal the will equal the credits, right? Debits equal credits. Right? It all looks simple when you're doing one entry. And but when you have a thousand entries, well, you know, now all of a sudden there's all this confusion when your debits don't equal your credits, right? Why? They're nothing more than one entry a thousand times. So in trying to find the error, you look at each and every journal entry and say, yes, my debits equal my credits. Then you look to see if you posted that particular entry correctly. If you did, right, your debits should equal your credits. Then you do the math, all right, to get your balances, right? Well, did you do your math right? If you did, your debits still equal your credits then you transfer the information to your trial balance. Well, did you transfer it correctly? You know, if you did, debits still equal credits. And then again, you do the math, right, in order to have, you, you know, to see what your total of your debits and total of your credits is. And if you do the math correctly, your debits have to equal your credits, right? And that's how you keep your books in line, all right? So, that's it for trial balance and where we're going from here is we're going to take the information off of our trial balance and we're going to then create our financial statements okay so that's what we're going to look at in the next uh, in the next framework